What's up, Compete Training Academy family? Welcome to the Compete Mentality Podcast. The mission of the Compete Mentality Podcast is to motivate, educate, and inspire others to compete. No matter what area of life you are in, we are all called to compete. Our definition of competing is doing what God is calling you to do, even when it's hard. This episode of the Compete Mentality Podcast is sponsored by the Lewis Jackson and Jordan Delks Basketball School. You're looking for details coming in April on our social media avenues. It's now my pleasure to introduce my guy, former Kentucky basketball player, Marion Giant legend, and former pro, Julius Mays. Julius, thanks for coming on, man. Hey, man, a great opportunity. I'm glad that you uh, gave me the opportunity to come on and, and chat with you. Absolutely, man. And you're, you're a wealth of knowledge uh, for sure. I've, I've always loved hooping with you. And uh, you're, <laughs> you're just a walking bucket. And uh, you, got, you got a lot of great stories. So I'm, I'm excited to dive in. And uh, before we get started, I remember playing in the Grace Hoops Classic with you. This was right after Christmas. And uh, you and I were uh, <laughs> we were talking about uh, our favorite our favorite meats to put on the smoker and what we did for Christmas. I believe uh, I did some ribs. I I think you did some rib tips, if I remember. I, I did. I did. I did. <laughs> yeah. Yes. So, uh, uh, man, I, I I gotta ask you now, man. What's your favorite thing to smoke right now? And describe it for us. Uh, there's a few. Um, I like. Obviously, as you just mentioned, I love my ribs and rib tips. I love to smoke those. Um, I love to smoke chicken wings. And uh, about two years ago, man, I got conned into cooking for the holiday with my family, my whole entire family. And, yeah. You know, so it was just spur of the moment thing. I'm like, you know what? I'm going to go. I tell my wife, I'm, like, I'm going to go buy a whole chicken. And I'm going to just smoke it. And, man, this became one of my favorites. It just, the whole thing just collapses and falls apart. It just shredded chicken and it's juicy and tender, and that, it's not like that smoky taste. So uh, those are the top three things on my list, man. I, I love it. Ever since I've been doing it um, for the last few years, I, I became addicted. A absolutely. I I'm right there with you. I'm addicted, too. And uh, I got to ask you, you got any uh, secret rubs or specialties there? You know, I, um, so one of my big marinades is uh, – uh, it's like a roasted red pepper marinade, um, and uh, like I, I like mix it with some brown sugar, and that's usually how I tenderize my meat. And then I just season it with you know your basic seasonings like your pepper, your uh, Lowry seasoning salt, and a little onion and garlic powder. And um, but man, it, it it works for me every time, and it hasn't failed me yet. And yep. anybody who's <laughs> tasted it loved it. As if I'm doing things special, and I think that so. Um, it's been pretty good, man. Uh, I know people usually don't like to give their secrets secrets away to cooking, yeah. but I don't plan on selling it or starting a restaurant. So um, <laughs> cool. I, I would love for people to taste the greatness. I, I, absolutely, I got a I got a word doc. Every podcast I do, I got a word document out and taking notes, and so I'm taking notes on that. I'm stealing that from you. So, <laughs> but, uh, Nah, um, it, hey, you know it's crazy. I, I mean, it was it was just one of those things that happened to be in the house, and I told my wife, "I'm like, you know what? I'm gonna try it. Like, we haven't tried it. I'm gonna try yeah. it." Yeah, hey, it, it was great. Uh, man, I love it. I, I'm gonna try it next. I'm gonna try it next. So, uh, Julius, man, you're uh, had an amazing career here in Marion, man. And uh, for there's a lot of hoopers that uh, are gonna be listening to this podcast that know who you are, uh, but just please tell our listeners, man, kind of your background and how you kind of got where you are today. Man, just really just a lot of a lot of hard work, man. I wasn't the most gifted. Um, you know, a lot of people, they look at me and they seen the success I had on the court. And, uh, you know, a lot of people, you know, think it was, a lot of things were just given to me. But, um, you know, I actually, I just came off vacation. I was talking to a buddy who, you know, who's seen my growth and my progress. And, man, and it, I really – I really started from nothing. Like I really wasn't any good. I was short. Uh, I was stubby. I was a little runt. Um, I wasn't, I've never been athletic. Um, so everything I did, I worked for, you know, I was a, a, a real student of the game. Um, I knew I couldn't jump and touch the top of the square or yep. I wasn't lightning quick. So, you know, I found my, I found other ways to beat people. And it was really just being a student of the game and studying and studying and 
working and working and working and working some more and uh, really honing in on the basics. And I had, I mean, even still to this day, I mean, I just have a real fundamental sound game, not flashy, but very efficient and and it works, man. And um, it, it, it really was a big part of my success is just, you know, sticking to the basics and, and trusting it. And, you know, it, it got me a long ways. No doubt about it. And kind of before we, uh, went live on the podcast we were talking about hooping it up and uh man I said man anytime you need a player I'll hoop with you because uh I just love how you play the game and how how fundamentally sound you are and just your your IQ for the game and man that's that that's so true and looking back at your career I remember personally and correct me if I'm wrong I believe the semi-state game at Lafayette Jeff uh, mm-hmm. against uh, Etwan and uh, yep. Angel Garcia, East Chicago. Yep. Uh, that was the first time I saw you live. And I was like, man, this dude's the truth. <laughs> he, he can really play. So that was the first time. Man, that was an amazing game, honestly. That was amazing. <laughs> but uh, It was, man. You know, to me, that was a state game. I felt like whoever won that game was going to state. And, and they went on to win state. Yep, no doubt. And uh, we're going to kind of dive in uh, to your background and your history and growing up and everything. And I just to develop this podcast, I'm going to take bits and pieces from your background. And uh, I, really, man, like, just growing up in Marion, man, what was it like playing for the Giants? Uh, just kind of describe to our listeners, man. I mean, we're all at CTA, man. We're all about Indiana high school basketball, just what Indiana basketball means. You've been all over the world. Uh, you've been to, you played college basketball uh, all over the country, but like, there's really nothing like Indiana basketball. So like kind of describe uh, to our listeners what it was like playing for the Giants and maybe some, some great memories you got playing for the Giants. Man, you know, honestly, it was an amazing experience. Probably out of all my experiences of basketball, I would say it's probably the best, man. It was it was one of those things that, you know, every kid, you know, when you pick up a ball, you want to go to the NBA. Um, but, you know, that the tradition at Marion was just different. Um, so, uh, it, it, it was always my dream to, to put that jersey on and – and try to try to get my name up 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 on the wall or sure I uh, wanted my poster up there or you know try to hang a banner so you know that was the goal I started working towards when I was younger so you know when I when it was kind of crazy because it was a it was a air obviously when you know Zach and them were really good and then you know it dropped off real quick after that you know um so my year going into high school it was kind of like you know what what am I getting myself into because yeah we got this rich tradition but I think we were coming off a season where they only won two or three games. Um, so it was like, who is Marion at this point? You know, we got the rich tradition, but, you know, we hadn't won since Zach Randolph had left. So um, it still was my dream and my goal was to, you know, keep the tradition alive and really rebuild. And, you know, we got a new coach in Joe Luce. And for my freshman year, that's what we did. Each year we got better and better and better and better. And um, we took a step each year on the ladder of, you know, making a tournament run. And, you know, we made that run. This was an unfortunate situation. Both my junior and senior year, we lost in semi-state, as you mentioned, to East Chicago. And they went on to win state. And then we lost by buzzer beater the state game my senior year. So, um, obviously, I would have loved to to win both of those years. But, man, I couldn't ask for a better experience and a, and a better career at Marion. Um, it's really indescribable. I mean, anybody who's been to a game when it's packed uh, against a Newcastle or even back then against Old Kill or a county school, like, it's just crazy, man. The, the experience is indescribable. It's, it's, it, was, it was a dream of mine, and it came true, and um, I loved it. Absolutely, man. And really, uh, I, I, I love the quote John Wooden talks about, uh, that he'd trade all 10 of his national championship rings for one – Indiana high school state championship ring and like just to hear you tell your story of what it was like to play for the Giants man that, that just fires me up man and that, that's 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 a great story and really I want to transition to your recruiting process and uh, I'm training a lot of hoopers right now going through the recruiting process and it can be hard it can be scary it can be confusing 
Um, so please just, if you don't mind, share with us your recruiting process all the way from when it started to who recruited you and how you ended up choosing NC State, um, just so, you know, our Hoopers can learn from you. You know, it was different. Um, I kind of, you know, entering my freshman year, you know, I had a solid freshman year. Uh, you know, I started out playing a little bit of JV and varsity, finished the year playing all varsity. Well, that AAU season. Um, I'm playing with Indiana Elite. Uh, mm-hmm. We go to one tournament, we play well, but then we go to Pittsburgh. Um, this was the first tournament, you know, where scouts, college recruiters could be, college coaches could be there. And um, I mean, I, Michigan State's there. We're playing a kid that they're recruiting, and one of the top kids in the country. And I mean, I just, I mean, I, I just put on a show. Like that whole weekend, I just put on a show. So that kind of just started it off. Um, you know, that kind of got all the big 10 schools because, you know, it's always a word of mouth. You know, they, uh. they hear about it from one person. So then they want to see what the hype is about. So um, that was kind of the, the, the start of it with, uh, well, in front of Michigan State, I kind, of, kind of broke ground of my recruitment and, you know, people coming in. Well, then, funny story, <laughs> um, Monty Tao, who's from Oak Hill, um, his mom, I think, was sick in Swayze. And so he came to Swayze to to check on his mom. Well, um, we were having open gyms and stuff. So he swung by Marion, watched her open gym. And, you know, obviously I I played well in open gym. And so, you know, that kind of sparked interest in him. And so then they came back to some of my AAU games. And obviously I I just had a really good summer, my freshman going into my sophomore year, uh, play right all at the right times. in front of the right coaches and you know it 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 sparked a lot of interest um that was when I started getting offers from you know the Xavier's the uh, NC State's uh Big Ten schools uh IU um a lot of the majors um and it was really a learning experience you know now I could sit back and tell the story but I really at that time I really had no idea um so it's funny that you say it's hectic for you know the guys that you're training and stuff right now like I mean Unless you got, I mean, it's great that they got somebody like you because unless you have that person, I mean, it's really hard. Like it's it's really like the blind leading the blind. Um, and that was was with my situation. Like you know, my high school coach, I was his first big time recruit. Um, you know, my family, we had no idea. My sister went and played D one, but you know, her process wasn't like this, so um, we really didn't know. Um, and so uh, I kind of cut my recruitment off short. Um, I don't regret going to North Carolina State, but if I could do it all over again, I would have took the process out. You know, it became overwhelming because my phone wouldn't stop ringing. I was always on the phone. I was always in a text conversation, um, which, you know, it's a blessing. You know, it's crazy that I'm complaining about that because a lot of kids, you know, they dream about that. But it was it was really overwhelming, man. Like I was a 15, 16 year old kid and, you know, every day, like a new coach is calling me and, you know, it's almost starting to hear the same thing over and over again. So. You know, at some point it starts to feel like, you know, you know, what's true and what's not true, like what's real and what's not real. And so we actually went out to North Carolina State um, and I played in a little showcase, still play well. Um, really loved it, fell in love with the campus, loved it so much that when the school year started, my mom and I went out there as well. Um, and then kind of just, man, really end up committing, like didn't really even know what I was doing. Like I kind of got put on the spot, like. My mom kind of put me on the spot, like, so what are you going to do? I'm like, yeah, I'm like, what do you mean? What am I going to do? So I'm like, hey, I'm coming, you know? So it, that's kind of how it happened. I committed, uh, you know, I went down to practice um, and then I, I kind of shut my recruitment off early. Um, and that was that, man. I ended up going there and, you know, uh, love loved Raleigh, North Carolina, loved the people I met down there. Um was a great experience as far as, you know, the college situation. Didn't work out basketball-wise, but, man, it, it, it's still the crazy process. I think back now, and it, it was it was, it was was crazy. Like, it, I feel for kids that age. I try to advise all kids to enjoy the process, take your time, um, and really just kind of envision themselves um, where, they, where they best see, where they think they can fit. Um, you know, I was one of those kids, like, you know, I'm thinking I'm going to the NBA. Like, I didn't think, you know, let me go somewhere and have a great career. I was thinking, like, let me go somewhere and have a great year, and then I can be in the NBA. You know, let me go to the biggest school I can in the best conference, have a great year, and I can be in the NBA. When the reality of it is, when you sit back and think of it, it's not realistic. Like, that 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 option is too far and in between. And, 
you know, again, at 15 and 16, you can't tell me that. But, you know, now when I look back, I wasn't mature. I didn't have the correct guidance. Um, and so I made a decision that obviously I don't regret, but, you know, with, with a little better guidance, I wouldn't have made that decision. Sure, sure. And I think we can learn a lot from that. And I want to dive into that a little more. Um, and uh, you transferred twice, uh, just just like I did. I, 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 was, I played at uh, a smaller level, smaller schools. But uh, I think transfers sometimes can get a bad rep. But I know for me personally, and I think I, you could relate as well, looking back, just like you're kind of talking about earlier, you're so grateful for each step of the way. And I'm just curious, man, like what is something that you learned from each stop at NC State, Wright State in Kentucky? Just what did you learn? Um, I really learned how to be humble, you know, like it's different. After you get out of high school, it's completely different. Um, and like you said, like I think a lot of times like transfer, transfers get a bad rap, you know, it's like you're running from a tough situation and, you know, really, it's not the case. Like, I mean, I don't think people really see it on the other side. Like, um, you know, this was something this is something that, you know, you do your whole life, you know, and for it to go, um, you know, I, every situation is going to have adversity. You know what I mean? And uh, I feel like that's where a lot of transfers get the, the bad rap feeling like they're running from adversity. And, you know, with, with the people who judge the transfers, what they don't see is what goes on every day, you know, in those gyms or the conversations that are had with the coaches, you know, they it's quick to judge a kid because all you see is, Hey, this kid is leaving. Um, but you don't know the backstory. Um, and right. you know, like I know it's, it's a lot that goes into it. Um, and so it, like I, I learned something from every, I met great people, um, people that I still have relationships with. Um, I met, I played with, gave me opportunity to play with a lot of great teammates. Um, I got people in every place that I played that I can call and I can, I can go right now. Um, you know, Wright State was completely different than NC State. Uh, you know, it was it was mid major, so it was a high opener for me. Like I got spoiled playing in the ACC, flying everywhere. You know, everything yeah. top of the line. Coming down to mid major when we're we're bussing everywhere, we're we're practicing way longer. You know, things are different. The you know and it pra like you know practice the competitiveness was just completely different. Um, and then going you know to one of the meccas of college basketball after that is, you know, the experience is indescribable and, you know, brushing shoulders with some of the people I brushed shoulders with there. And, you know, some of the people I met there that I built relationships that I'll have for a lifetime is, you know, really, I, I, I use it as networking. Um, and, I, and that's what I try to explain to kids today. Like, you know, don't let basketball use you use basketball. Um, you know, whatever you see fit, whatever is best for you, like that's what you got to do. Like, and, Again, like you said, we both were in the same boat. Like that was the best option for me. Like it, it, it's not the most ideal situation, and would I advise it for everybody? Absolutely not. But it's what worked for me. Um, I, I didn't ever envision going to play for three schools, but that's just how it happened. Yeah, absolutely. And I, I think there's lots to take from that. I just want to encourage you, Hoopers, you especially you college Hoopers, listen to this right now. Uh, just like Julius is saying, I can look back on each stop of the way and. Uh, look at my network that I made and my relationships that I made. And like Julius is saying, he can call anybody from any place he's been. And many times in life, it's not what you know, it's who you know. <laughs> I mean, and, and how that Absolutely. helps, helps Absolutely. you out in life. And so, um, and I mean, I just look back uh, at the different places I've been. I mean, I, I wouldn't have got my first coaching job if I would have went to Anderson University my freshman year. Uh, that assistant coach got a head job and he gave me my first uh, coaching gig out of college. So, I mean, it just, and I'm sure Julius has story after story the same way of everything happens for a reason. So my encouragement to you guys is just trust the journey. I um, mean, it's your story. Don't compare yourself to anybody else. It's all happening for a reason. And uh, I love hearing that from Julius of how uh, he just trusted the journey and that that's made him who he is. And uh, I, I love to hear that. And uh, I, I got to throw in a question that I, I didn't send you beforehand, but uh, just it just came to mind. You telling your story, man, you've played in some unbelievable arenas. So, like, I got to hear your top three arenas that you've played in uh, <laughs> that uh, if, you, if you had to list your top three, what would it be? I'm putting you on the spot here. Man, it's tough, man. Um... Obviously, 
playing at Duke and Carolina is hard. Like, uh, I mean, it, it gets crazy in both of those places. Um, let me see. Maryland was hard. And then, you know, playing at Kentucky, like, <laughs> people don't realize, like, every team's national championship game almost. So anywhere we went on the road, it was a whiteout. It was a blackout. It was a red out. Like yeah. it was crazy. You know what I mean? So like, it, I mean, it was it was. We were always getting the fans best, no matter what. So yep. I mean, that year we played at Mississippi State, and I thought you know the building was gonna collapse because it was so loud. And I'm just like, what? You know? I mean, it was so bad. Like people started throwing ice. I mean, it was crazy. Like it, <laughs> that, that experience there was just unreal. But I'd have to my top three man. I still have to probably go in the ACC was Maryland is a tough place to play in. Um, Duke, I don't think people realize how small it is. And like, you know, when, when, the, when the Cameron crazies get the, you know, sticking their arms out like that, like yeah. it's all, you feel like they're on the court. So it's, it's crazy. And then Carolina, man, it, you know, when they're really, really good. And then when I played them, they were really, really good. It, oh. it, it's like, you can't even hear you. You can't even hear you thinking there. That man, that, that's that's crazy to even think about. And uh, I remember uh, being playing college, small college basketball, knowing who you were and following your success and following uh, your career and seeing you play different places. That that's just crazy. And uh, I actually got the opportunity to work uh, Coach K's basketball camp for three years, and that gym is so small. It's unbelievable. Small man. I mean, even like. There's high school locker rooms better than the locker rooms that do, like the visiting locker rooms at least. Like it was, it was awful. It was awful. No, no doubt about it. No doubt about it. And and Julius, you're you're an unbelievable player. Uh, you've trained lots of kids. Uh, you've coached at a high level. Um, at CTA, we pride ourselves in developing players. Um, I really want to hear your player development philosophy for your players that you've coached that you've trained um from your perspective man I, I i look at every player is different um but i'm a strong believer in i feel like if, if every player can develop the basics then they can give themselves a chance um i think you know too many times and you know i've i've seen you guys train i've trained with your wife so i mean we we kind of stand on the same things uh but i think too many times you know i mean you i'm sure you can attest to this you see so many videos of you know seven and eight year olds when between the leg behind the back step backs and you know my thing is like I challenge all those trainers is because I would like to see those kids hit 50 layups in a row like if you can't if you can't do that then you know why, why are you doing between the legs behind the back so you know my thing is like the basics like you you can never do enough layup drills you can never do enough mid-range drills it's a large it's a lost art you know everybody just wants to be a three-point shooter and yep. you know that, that's not the best shot all the time you know what I mean that's not the highest percentage like the, the game is won on percentages. Like, you know, you very rarely do you get Steph Curry's of the world, you know? Like, that's why there's only one Steph Curry. Like, you don't get too many people like that. So, I, I'm i a guy, like, I, I just like doing the basics, man. Just all of the fundamentals. Man, I love hearing that. And, honestly, the more Corny and I, um, we played the game at a high level, and as, obviously you did too, and the more we're around the game and, or around high level trainers or high level coaches like basketball is basketball, man. Like it ain't reinventing the wheel. Uh, no. it, it's it, we, we have a, uh, a saying here in the barn that mindset is greater than skill set, And it's more about just the way you approach the game and doing the little things really well, like you're talking about. So I, I love hearing that. And so, man, I, I always talk about this story to some of my hoopers in the barn of, uh, Kobe Bryant and Wesley Johnson. And I was when Kobe uh, tore his Achilles and um, him, he took Wesley Johnson who played at Syracuse and he took him to the gym and Kobe, all he could do is take one dribble that just cause he had a hurt Achilles. And he, he said, I ain't moving on until I make 25 in a row. And he just do a one dribble pull up 25, 25, and just all over the place. And, Wesley was exhausted. I, lo I love that reading that article and hearing that interview from Wesley is just the most unbelievable workout he's ever been through. And he didn't take more than one dribble. 
And so that, that, just to reiterate what you're saying, you just got to do the little things really, really well. And really, Julius, you were an elite shooter, uh, still are. Uh, I can attest to that from uh, when we play together for sure. But um, uh, I mean, I mean, especially your days at Kentucky. I mean, that was your role. I mean, you, you were you were an elite shooter, knockdown shooter. How did you become such a great shooter? Is the first question, two part question. And then, what are some of your favorite drills uh, to become a great shooter? I mean, really, I was forced to. You know, I, I feel like I've always been able to shoot the ball okay. Um, but in high school, you know, the best thing I did was I had an in-between game. I was I was considered a bigger guard. I was strong. Um, I was really crafty. Um, yep. So if you weren't my size or even if you were my size, then I was going to take you to the post. Like, I was going to make it easy for me. Like, I wasn't one. I didn't want to play out there with the ball or anything like that. Um, I had a really good mid-range game. But, you know, you translate that to the ACC. Like, you know, I'm going against 6'6 six, six and 6'5 six, guards. and that's jumping and touching the white square. And it's like, oh, wait, like, you know, like, like, hold on a minute. So, you know, I had to adjust. Um, it, it was, it was, it was, it, it wasn't my choice, but I had no, I didn't have a choice really. Like, and so it just came again. It was putting constant time in, time in, time in. And even when I went to Kentucky, like, I had never been the guy to just run off screens. Like, I had to learn to do that. Like, that wasn't even what I was comfortable with. Like, I'm comfortable with, the ball being in my hands and, you know, me figuring out a way to create. But, you know, I've never been a guy to have somebody really create for me. And so, you know, getting in that in that system, that's what I had to do to be able to play a lot of minutes because he wanted me to play off the ball. And, you know, it took a while for me to adjust. You know, even people like, oh, why you don't shoot more? And I'm like, because it's not even what I'm comfortable with is just running off screens and shooting, but it's what I'm forced to do. And so I have no choice. And so I, I learned to do it, but that was my first year really ever doing it. So um, I, I developed being a really good shooter by just constantly continuing to do it, do it, do it, do it and over again. And, um, you know, I really, I, I've been through so many shoot drills, man. I, I don't even know what's my favorite. Um, I like, I like to do time stuff because I like to challenge myself. I like to have to make so many or do something and, you know, make so many, so many different shots in a certain amount of time to, to challenge myself I always like to do something to challenge myself and even when I train kids I always try to come up with something creative to make them challenge themselves um and, and each time we do it to try to get better um that's the only way you can really gauge if, you, if it's even working to to do something to challenge yourself I'm not one to really just do spot shots because it's not realistic um <laughs> you very very few times are you just gonna get a wide open shot and then when you are a good shooter once they realize you're a good shooter you definitely aren't gonna get that <laughs> yeah. many wide open looks so just trying to be creative um and I, I don't think I just have one in particular that's my favorite but I love to shoot it <laughs> man I think there's so much yeah, absolutely man I think there's so much truth to that too man like uh we, we hardly ever do just spot shooting just for training and because, like you said that never happens our philosophy is you know you do game shots at game speed and so I, I love hearing that from you and that that speaks to how you got to where uh, you are you are as a player and uh, got to shoot at that elite, le elite level. I also would like to point out to all you players listening to this uh, from Julius that he played different roles. And I think it's cool. He played different roles on different teams and embraced what he had to do for the team. And uh, especially coming to Kentucky, uh, high level, and uh, ha having to play a different role that he's never played in his life uh, to, to – he sacrificed for the team. He, and I mean, you watch his game today and you haven't played with them. Like he excels with the ball in his hands and having to come off screens and uh, be, be the shooter for the team. I mean, I, I think that's really cool to hear. So whatever your coach is asking you to do, uh, you got, you got to sacrifice sometimes for the betterment of the team. And he played obviously on a fantastic team that year um, and they achieved great things, but, to, to achieve great things, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta sacrifice. You gotta sacrifice your personal, uh, your sometimes your personal goals or personal well-being for the betterment of the team. That's what's beautiful about sports because uh, it, that's going to happen later on in life too. Uh, in your in your professional world, uh, in your marriage, uh, <laughs> in, 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 <laughs> right? We're laughing at that one. You gotta sacrifice. You gotta sacrifice, and uh, you better get used to it. That's for sure if you want to be successful. 
And uh, uh, Julius, uh, I kind of want to wrap up this podcast talking about a time where you experienced some adversity. Really, this whole podcast is just to inspire people uh, that, that are going through adversity just to keep fighting, just to keep competing. And our definition of competing is doing what God is calling you to do, even when it's hard. Valleys are always coming. But those who fight through those valleys, fight through those adversity, it, it makes you mature, complete, uh, lacking in nothing. You become better. So share time with us as we close. Just kind of uh, some adversity you really had to fight through. Um, really, just you know, like I just told you, like you know, my situations with with, with transferring. Um, you know, it it was tough. Like it, it was a tough adjustment. Like. Um, it, and again, you can attest to it as well, like going to every situation and having to be be something different. You know what I mean? Like something that you aren't used to. Um, on top of the fact, like my first situation was you know, I had to sit a year. You know what I mean? Like so all I had to do, all I got to do was practice. I didn't get to travel with the team. Um, I'm practicing every day with the team, doing all the individual workouts. I'm going to class, but you don't get to play. You know what I mean? And obviously it was because of my own decision of wanting to leave, but. I mean, that's a feel, tough pill to swallow. Like something I've done my whole life, and for it to be like basically put on pause, and I'm sitting a whole year without playing a whole game. And um, you know, the the most adverse part was when I came back the following year and got to play. Like you know, I felt like I had a really good year that I set out. You know what I mean? Like I felt like I was playing well, I was getting my confidence back, and you know, we come to start that season and like. It didn't even look like I belonged. Like I start questioning, like, you know, do I even belong at this level, or like, do I even want to play basketball anymore? Like, like the best thing I ever did was score the ball, and I couldn't score the ball anymore. Like I'm, I, and it was more so, you know, a mental thing because I, I was questioning myself so much because of my first two years were just so, so, so rocky. Like I didn't know who I was as a player anymore. So, um, I mean, again, it goes back to. Just getting in that gym, put me in, and 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 I had to become the. I had to to go back to what I did, and you know, I, I actually looked at some of my high school tapes and and some of the things that I did to say like, really, to gain my confidence back. Like, you know, you are a player, like you do belong, like you can be elite. And um, I, I looked at some of my high school films, man, and I went in the gym, took one of my buddies, uh, and also took you know one of the the assistant coaches on the right state staff, and. We went in there and we just got after it. And I kid you not, man, we went on a road trip to Florida and we played the University of Florida and uh, I tore them up. And I had a, from that point on, I just didn't look back. I started having a great year, ended up being newcomer of the year in the Horizon League. Yeah. Uh, played real well. Um, almost scored 500 points in the season. So it was, it, it was, it was good, man. Um, again, a, a eye opener for me because I, honestly, I really wanted to, to cave in and quit. Like it, I, I did, I just didn't feel like I belong. We played the exhibition game, and I think I scored two points. And I don't even think I shot. I didn't. I, I felt like I couldn't even get a shot off. So I was really, man. It was a, a, a mental thing, man. I had a real mental block. My confidence was shot, and um, it, it was a time that I really could have gave up and, and caved in. Um, but you know, I, I, I stuck it out, and it, it ended up turning out good for me. No doubt about it. And honestly, I really appreciate you sharing that because uh, I think for a lot of us, we can look uh, I, and for me, for, for me personally, we're the same age and I'm looking at a player like you and I'm like, man, does he really struggle with confidence? Does he really struggle uh, with the same things that I'm going through? And I think it's so powerful uh, for you to share that with our audience that e even, I mean, you know, uh, even even you, you know, like are struggling with struggling with the same struggles that I'm talking with, like a freshman in high school who's trying to make the freshman team with. You know what I'm saying? Like it's uh so absolutely it, yeah. So so I I think that's that's really powerful for all of us to hear, and that that's just what I want you guys to take away from this podcast is that like Julius didn't quit. He just kept at it. And he made the best of each situation. He rolled with the punches. And uh, it, it just, he, his journey was, was for him. It, his story uh, was for him. And that's the way God wanted it to happen. And that's why my encouragement is for all of you guys. Like, trust the journey. Trust the process. 
God has you exactly where you are for a reason. And, uh, and he ended up playing for the, the most storied program in, in, in the country. And it ha- has it played overseas and uh, has played professionally, played against some of the best players in the world. And so uh, played in the best arenas in the world. But he, he would have never done that uh, if, if when he was at Wright State, like he was talking about, had quit. And what did he do? He, he got back in the gym. He got back in the gym, worked on his game, fought through the adversity. And uh, Julius, I got to throw in one more question uh, for my guys. I got some guys that uh, uh, want to play overseas, um, that want to play professionally. Just, uh, just kind of give us a, your, your thoughts and a recap of your professional career. And just w- what, what was it like playing overseas? It's a real grind, man. Like, uh, it's not for everybody. You know what I mean? Like, to, to go over there and play, you really, really got to want it. You got to want it even that much more than you wanted it here. Um, sure. Because, you know, a lot of times the, the money isn't going to be there. Uh, the situation probably isn't going to be the greatest. It's not like you're going to get to choose the country where that you're going to. Um, everything's going to be foreign. Um, it's, it's culture shock. Um, the style of play is different. Um, it's a lot more physical, a lot more uh, fundamental and skilled. To whereas in the American is you know it's a lot more athleticism, um, it's just completely different. Um, you know anybody that can get to experience, I'd advise them to. Um, I, I I was just to the point where I was just kind of burnt out. You know I mean I I had a you know my first child at that point, and so I just you know it was more important uh, to be in my kid's life and to you know have some stability. Um, I felt like I got to live out my dream as much as I could. Um, and so it was, it was my time to, you know, to pour into my family. Um, but again, any, anybody who wants to play or gets the opportunity to play, like, you know, I would tell them to take full advantage of it. Cause you know, everybody's situation is different. What was for me might not be for them. What was for them might not be for me. Um, you know, the, the, the best piece of advice I can always give somebody is, you know, don't ever, don't ever look at somebody and feel like you should be there. You know, everybody's, everybody, like you say, everybody's journey is different. You know what I mean? Like, you got to figure out what is best for you um, and what was what, what it was for me, as I said. So um, it was a great experience. Um, I don't regret that I, that I hung it up when I did. I feel like I could have had a long career over there, but I don't even really think my body would have made it. So that was another part of, you know, my body talking to me saying, hey, you know, like if you, you want to if you if you want to be able to walk in 10 years then you know, you might want to might want to chill it out a little bit. So um, I listened to my heart. Um, my body um, I wasn't in love with the grind anymore so uh, you know I knew then when I wasn't in love with the grind and it was time for me to hang it up so but the experience was great the atmosphere over in Europe is great um, the, the opportunity to call myself a pro was obviously a dream come true um, but it again it, that was that was my journey that might not be someone else's so uh, it was it was great I don't regret anything Absolutely. And uh, I appreciate you sharing that. And I, I just hear the same message over and over and over uh, through Julius's career and his life that you just got to trust the journey. You just got to keep fighting. You got to keep competing. And uh, uh, for those of you um, that are thinking about playing overseas and um, navigating that process, I hope you can take a few pointers away from Julius and uh, uh, apply that to your life. And Julius, I just appreciate you taking time on the podcast here and sharing your wisdom, man. I, I can't wait to go back and listen to this again uh, and uh, just hear some of the, some of the wisdom again that you share with us and uh, all you hoopers uh, listening. This is a special treat uh, for, for you guys. This is a guy who's, who's been around the block. He's a real one. And so Julius, I appreciate you taking time, man. Man. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. And compete training Academy family. Always remember that. Competing is doing what God is calling you to do, even when it's hard.